But in the previous game, they had allowed the jungle to get online quickly. Yes, of course, but here we go. The drafting has already begun. Coming in with blue side. Toda, Wan Wan, Kajan, as well as Lilia, already banned out. But then we jump over to Onik, they banned out the glue, and as well as the Valentina. It's possible that we have open a lot of junglers, because so far, it's all open. Fanny's open! Fanny is open. Joy See? is axed. Oh boy. Yeah, no, no, Fanny's open. Uh, you, you have Fredrin open as well. Uh, Lapu Lapu is an option. Uh, this... Even Farsa, even Farsa were snubbed in the, in the bands. Absolutely. So, I, boxes yeah. in range, no question. Uh, this is this is a really tough oh. call here. Now, this is what I wanted to talk about because, again, when you're looking at that early game jungler, that's immediately a response from the red side to say, hey, we're going to shut it down with our first two picks straight away. And that's why I was thinking maybe Fanny might not be the way to go, knowing how Toda kind of foresee the draft. Like, both teams hold off till the jungler picks, is that what you're saying? There's a good possibility. There Be really is. Yeah, and I, I think that could work really well for them too. And uh, especially, again, going back on the performance that Rival had in the previous <laughs> series, he should be confident here, but no! It's actually going to be picked up right away here. The Fanny is open, mm -hmm. they're going to lock it in. Yep, Onik, make that first move. It's easier to just set the pace and to have your opponents think of how to solve it, right? Especially if their first pick was a carry. As much as I love the carry in this current meta, this current patch, super strong, right? They buffed her dash. She can, like, dash every X seconds. And yeah. You just blink and she's already moving, right? The Fanny is, doesn't doesn't help that. Like, it's, it's so hard still to catch a Fanny with a carry. So, Speaking of which... Oh, no. Yeah. I, I love it. I love it. I love how we were making eye contact as soon as he like, looked down. Watch. Oh, no. Hilda's got Hilda. locked in. So good. So good. This Hilda on Yumsky. I hope it's on Yumsky. Could also go into the hands of Momo in the XP lane. Regardless, it's going to give Kairi here such a hard time. It is going to give Kairi a bit of a hard time. We'll see. This is Onik that we are talking about. And the first phase is done for Todok. Let's see the response coming in from Onik. And speaking of which, I think Onik Esports, especially from uh, Onik ID in particular, really just uh, almost very close to a perfect blend of Indonesian and Filipino star power. All in one, which is kind of nuts. Yep, and in the star power, oddly enough, just comes from two main dudes, right? Mm -hmm. Kochi and Kairi, yeah. and that's enough. That's hey, enough. let's not, let's not. I'm not taking credit away from Keyboy, man. He's still, he's still, he's got a place in my heart too. Oh, I like the ban. Like, I like the fact that the Hayabusa was banned out because I, before all this, I was like, you know, Rival had an amazing performance on the previous game, and it happened to be the Hayabusa, who again could have also gone in the hands of Kairi. But again, you leave that Fanny open. That's the pick, right? That's the pick he's going to go with. And as you guys mentioned, it is the perfect blend. And that's why, again, you've seen this Onyx Esports team really thrive with those additions, right? And that's something that nobody that is either a fan or maybe they're not a fan, but they can't deny that fact. Yeah, it, it just becomes inevitable. You can deny it. You can think there's a factor, but no, the results are there. Yeah, the results are definitely there. And now Fodak looked to try and take away more supports. Wait, Formes is just chilling in this the is, crowd. That's Formes. <laughs> yeah, that's Formes just chilling in the crowd casually. Well, this is still the group stages, so expect to see him a little later on. But Akai also getting mad out. Whoa, this is a really good call coming in from Onik. They're going deep. They're, they're covering their bases. Mm -hmm. Junglers of all sorts. They're taking away the possible best choice. A utility jungler, they got Akai. An assassin yeah. that could spread out uh, the Beatrix and the Fanny, they got the Hayabusa. Maybe they want to... I don't know if this is going to happen, but maybe they want to play against that Fanny Ling in the, in the jungle. That could happen. Because again, your options are, That's like you true. said, they're covering the bases, right? Mm -hmm. You have the assassins, you have those tanky junglers. There's the cho being taken out here. So again, what is that option for rival in the jungle? It's it's already very narrow as it is. Yeah. I think he still has a couple of options to really work with, but it needs to work. Coincidentally, it needs to work well with Momo in the EXP lane, right? Because they could take the angle off. Hey, let's jump into the back line. We're specifically targeting this Beatrix, mm -hmm. or maybe looking to have a hero that can force out farmers to use that call altar as soon as possible. Possibly thinking of a uh, song. Uh, that's that, that's an XP laner, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're looking at Momo more than Rival. Mm -hmm. It's going. The solution can come from either. Exactly. And let's not forget the classic Todok. They might even just whip out a Lunox into the jungle for uh, for fun. You know, you never know.
it's not impossible that the carry could also go into the jungle. Yep. <laughs> if, if you're looking at already, Kairi hunting down the carry, it doesn't mind, I wouldn't mind it being a mirror match here. Like, just mm. legit, having them both farm up. But, ooh, I can't believe that the Kadira was snubbed for, I'm not sure if, if it was banned in the next couple of matches, but we saw game one, yeah. blacklist in the hands of Haji, mm -hmm. and then just again today to close up the night. Yeah, I think this is a really good pick, especially when it's up against someone so like good. Eve. And not to mention that when you are looking for that one shot potential against these marksmen, no problem. If I'm not looking for Eve, uh, I'm just going to make sure Chiku doesn't get to play the game. Are we looking at a. a, a is this a. <laughs> where is the Faramis going in this case? Is it mm -hmm. Keyboy? Is it a Rome Faramis? A Pharomis? Mm -hmm. Yup, yup, yup. We just had a moment there. I'm sorry. Is it I, a, eye contact is just through the roof right now. Yeah, yeah, I it could Kadita. be. A mid. Either way. Either yeah, way, it's it still it. possible. Could be, correct. Yeah. Alright, now, I will mention that there is a possibility that both of them might take Rome Boots, both looking for those, I, I don't know, it could be a dire hit, for all I know, coming in from Kadida, and yeah. we're expecting, you know, Farmis to be the one. We won't know just yet until we get into the game, and look at that emblems. Now, Ling, and as well as Masha. Very, very interesting. Masha, just the worst for Marksman, but Fredrin to be the shield of Onik. Oh, this is, uh, I wasn't expecting Masha to, to pop up here already in day one, but I agree. again, we were talking about spiciness, right? You can consider this a little bit of spiciness, right, for uh, this last game of the day here. But like I expected too, it's going to be that Ling Fanny matchup here. Both teams have to be able to secure that early jungle pacing. And I got to say, for Kyrie, it's going to be difficult because you've got a Hilda across from you. Yes. And we know how much havoc a Hilda can cause. Not in just, as well as the Masha. Yes. <laughs> but just the same. Todak's lineup here, that's way too much scaling. You're expecting too much from the map in terms of XP and gold. You're looking at a carry, an Eve, a Ling, and a Masha. How are they going to make that work? Look, I think they have some kind of orthodox way to get through certain phases of the game that are really awkward for Todak, but very clearly in Onyx favor. So we're just going to have to keep our eyes sharp here. Don't miss a moment of this matchup as we jump into the land of Dawn. Our very final game of day number one comes down between Todak versus Onyx Esports. All right, can confirm now Welcome that the Faramis is going into the hands of Sans, and it is a roaming Kadira. Watch out, look, Momo! Oh, already. So soon. Yeah, so very That's the plan, on. that's the game plan. That's exactly what you were calling. Kyrie, though, first blood drawn by Yumski. And as we were saying, these two heroes alone are going to cause havoc for Kyrie. What? What ult? I mean, what about level one. This is they chased them. They sent Momo in as well. They for they let go of Momo's very first wave to pull this off. That's that's crazy. That's just nuts. What? How? How? It, it, it's all about the collapse again. Kairi is rocking the high and dry. He's expecting that there would be. I think that's what I was expecting as well. They're looking for some scale in, looking for at least to build up some exp and some gold to make this matter. But instead, they went. The complete opposite. It's a total langar. Mm -hmm, Just mm -hmm. bumped straight into the goal, into the jungle. That's the idea. And even Onik, they, they are a little bit more aware of what Yumski is trying to do. But Kyrie is losing levels of time. Yeah, there. I mean, Yumski gonna be half, gonna be careful here if no. he can. But Kyrie able to take the revenge, gets the kill. But Rival now should be able to just secure himself a purple buff. Oh my goodness, this is the plan all along. Attack the jungle, take away the early game prowess with just simple tactics. Really nicely done by Todak all the way through. And uh, I, I think this is how it's going to work for Todak. Their game plan is to disrupt the jungle, force Onik to send two or three members from either their lanes or force mid to go into that jungle to protect Kyrie, And then eventually they will find equilibrium. Hell, even... Break even, make more money. Look, they're 300 gold lead, two minutes in. I, I, I mean, I hate the fact that they were able to pull this off because Momo, he comes back into lane and look at it. He's level three, two boots who just <laughs> hit level four. Very slight difference, but he's going to hit level four eventually. Like Momo just needs two minions. But I think this still works out, right? They All of that in the what? last two minutes just makes a breeze for the first turtle here. So that's already huge, at least in, in terms of economy. But here in the mid lane, Yoom's going to be the focus again. Oh, Can he get what? away? One hit, he's going to bob and what? weave and survive. The moves and grooves. Moves and grooves. As you put it so eloquently, 
Could have been. Could have been. But that's what you get with a Hilda. That's why she, there's a room for her in the meta at all times. Especially when assassins like Ling and Fanny are a thing. It's got to be so frustrating because Onik invested a lot of time and a lot of movement on the map. Five people made contact with Yumski before he got out of there, popping that sprint at the same time. So at the very least, Onik now setting up that front line, making sure, you know, Tonak doesn't get too far away with this. And he's not stopping. Look, he's, he's there again. He brought Rival there. Oh, on a Esports though, trying to do their best to work around it. It's Chiku guys that falls here. And now they're gonna get out of dodge the best they can. Yumski gonna be the focus. They're still looking to pursue as Boots goes in, gets the taunt, but Moon gonna have to flicker out. It's Yumski gonna be the focus oh. again. Kyrie grabbing another kill. There we go. Onyx seeing exactly what they need to do. Saw Yumski and we're like, okay, there might be more this time. Tonal might escalate things. And as soon as Shiku guys came into vision, instant pounce. Yeah, uh -huh. fool me once. Shame on you, fool me twice, not gonna happen. So Onik understands that they have to make the most of these rotations. If they're gonna answer, something's gotta give. They have to commit something and gain something. Rival! What? Oh. Oh, he got really, really close to actually getting that kill, but Yumski gonna, you know, face check it first. I'm very curious as to see how Todok is actually going to transition into the mid-game specifically, because that's when you expect to see Onik really getting out of the laning phase and working as a unit. I, I think. That's a good point, but at the same time, Onik Esports at this point, it took them what two, three minutes mm -hmm. to figure this, to figure it out. That real adjustment already, and now I feel like now that this next turtle is up, they do have a choice. Do we just give it away? But look at the positioning already from Onik Esports. Yumski though, gonna spot out CW, but Sans and Boots not too far, but they're too late. Rival able to secure another turtle here for Todak. Oh, keep. I mean, right now Kyrie is getting harassed out of his mind. Even running down towards the turtle, you can see Momo chasing him. Oh. Yeah. But as it is, Todak is happy that this is how the early game has gone, despite having, you know, conceded a few kills. Oh. And if they get CW, oh, CW oh. Oh, the flicker in! Tempest of Blade's gonna come out. He survives though with that cult altar. But now Sand's gonna be the focus. He takes all the damage. Moon grabbing the kill here under the tier one, tier two. That's what you buy with a hero like Moon, uh, with, 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 with heroes like Hilda and Masha on Momo and Moon's, uh, on Yumski. Again, Moon is, I keep mentioning Moon, he really hasn't left mid. Yeah, he really hasn't <laughs> left mid. He's really accumulating the farm and the rest of the team, including the side lanes, are pulling pressure, strangely enough. So that's how they scale up. You, you scramble the opponent so they can answer. Con oh. oh, no, no, no. Ooh. <gasps> Close oh, one. Close I was one. holding my breath. Yeah, so, same. <laughs> so they can't answer uh, on a conventional way. And then you just farm up. Look, it, it grew up to about a thousand and, thousand and change. Yeah, it, the bleeding has not stopped just yet. Yeah. But this is a comfortable position for Onik, right? They still can actually get to the later stages and look for that big fight in the mid game. However, keep your eyes, especially from Torak, the two ones are carrying Moon and as well as, oh, Chiku guys, right? Oh. not going to die. Okay, he, he gets out of there. All right. Oh. I can swipe off my forehead real quick. I think it's still working out though, because Kyrie's behind in levels, right? Yep. It's, he's level seven, Rival's level nine. And so objectively, you're gonna have that advantage already in the jungler. So if they can continue that on, this might be a clean take for Todak in terms of turtles as the next one's gonna be up in about 10 seconds here. But you can see them both fighting for space and position around that turtle pit. I was about to say one key advantage that at least Onik has is TW is ahead. TW is, is getting a lot of items, building up, but wait, no, oh, oh, underneath mid. Kyrie once again pushed out of the jungle here. So just like that, it is gonna be a clean sweep of turtles. Oh. Momo though, Sans able to pick up a kill Ooh. with that stampede. And there could be a small win here, but Yumski gonna fall as well. Kyrie able to get the killing spree, another kill for him in the jungle. Yeah, but they do translate into a turret down bottom, so eventually the farm will still keep rolling. I was saying, CW farming a little better than Chico guys, but we can't count out Chico guys. Chico guys just has that weird killer instinct, can come on any time in any way, he can be 0, 6, and 2 and still carry from there. Mm -hmm. And especially when you're on a hero like Harry, that's definitely something you have to be very wary of, even if you're as tanky as Boots. Kyrie's still getting harassed as always, but it's tough with the composition that Todak has. Blue Momo is not going to let him have destroyed. fun, and neither is Yumski. Man, just like that, I mean, there's, there's turrets going down here. Finally, the first, actually the second one in the game, both having one. So they're going to be working around with that space here, but still, focus on the mid lane. 
both these teams have the tools they need to win these small skirmishes leading up to that first Lord of the game. Mm -hmm. Looking at the items so far, it's looking pretty good for the side of Todok. But even then, Onik, as soon as they're getting their second as well as their third items, we'll see the tables start to shift in their favor if Todok loses that lead. Oh, look at this massive farm on both Rival and the Chico guys. CW though, ah... Uh... I was wrong! TW's not farming as well as much. Mm. This is the first time we're seeing the item builds, and he just has Blade of Despair. That's trouble! Well, to be fair, he did get dove twice, one having to break his flicker, the second to death. So forcing him home. So, mm. it, yes, he's saving himself, not many deaths, but he's not staying in lane as long as much as he should. Yeah, the, the economy's not looking good. Oh. oh! CW, gonna have to flicker out to survive that. So still, total control here from Todak on Onik Esports' purple buff and just making it hell here for Kyrie to even get any buff. And the poking back and forth. Now it looks like Todak's gonna go ahead and focus on the mid lane. The flicker comes in. Boots, though, working on Chico, guys. Can't get him oh. as he falls here in the tier one. Sand's gonna flicker out, too. Turret falls down, though. Kyrie trying to unleash, able to pick up a kill, make it a double as Momo falls as well. Already. The tables are slowly starting to turn. The gears for Onyx Esports making it so much more of a problem for Todak. Boots, the shield of Onik right now must keep Todak in check. So here's what's going to happen. If Onik continues on this path, there is a window wherein they are ahead. There is a window wherein they will say where the fights happen and how they happen. But eventually, Todak is going to have Yumski and Momo just diving up front, possibly Momo having his third Guardian Helmet, yeah. and then he can just one-hit CW. Hell, maybe even one-hit Kairi. Oh, it's that. that scary when we get into the late game. So I'm guessing there's a time frame of maybe about four or five more minutes before that can happen. I think that's a good timing as well. And, and you got you to gotta point out the fact, too, Rival has just had a chill game. This is the most comfortable, probably, game you can have on this link, right? Mm -hmm. You're 0, 0, 0 almost 10 minutes in the game. You're going to be able to work on these objectives the way you want. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. it's the polar opposite for Kairi. 5-1-1, one, and one, but he's three levels down. Yeah. But it's a good recovery, though, given the early game, what happened in the first two minutes. But we can counter blessings as much as we Whoa. want, but it's all about this purple. Who's going to get it? Oh. Can rival can, can rival secure. They just got Lord. Yeah. They, I mean, again, Kyrie has done a good job working back from this, but still, oh. objectively, it's Todak with that advantage. Like you guys mentioned, you have Momo and Yumski going to any... Actually, they can even split up each other if they want to, focusing on the back line, protecting the front, causing havoc here. And that's what we're seeing. It's it's tough for Onik Esports. No, that's exactly it. Todok right now are doing their fate. Well, I wouldn't even say it's a split push, but they are doing cross map plays while yep. Yumski or even Momo is distracting them by purple buff, knowing how important it is for Kyrie specifically to get it. They know a contestion point, a choke point against Onik. Yeah, the reason why the split is so easy for Todak is because Yumski and Momo can just do whatever they want. Yeah. They can face off against three or four members and still get out alive. Mm -hmm. So that's why all the rest of the members of Todak are still farming elsewhere. Oh, you know, they're pushing get, hard. They're going to get that taunt off, but still it's only a turn oh! that goes down. Kyrie from the backside though. Can't get a kill. It was almost there, but he's going to fall here. Boots though, going to fall as well. Chico guys take it out, but it's a one for three trade. And now Todak knocking on the door of Onik Esports. Oh. This is, this is getting very sweaty already. One inhibitor has fallen. I was expecting maybe a second one here, but Onik, they've got to be really careful here. They have to stop this bleeding now. That bottom lane inhibitor push is a leaking roof. That is yeah. permanent damage. Again, we were just talking about how Momo and Yumsi can go wherever they want. This makes it worse. You constantly have to send someone to clear that wave down bottom or else you suffer a possible split push win. Oh boy, but once again, yeah, again, this contestion fight, these high intensity areas, purple buff, Lord right now, and I'm guessing that Todak wants even more. They're gonna start going for the orange. I wonder if, like, how many purple buffs Kyrie has actually been managed managed to get this game. That's actually a really good. Point. I don't know if that's the first one, maybe it's the second, but he hasn't <laughs> he hasn't had many opportunities to take it. So uh, finally, but still, even. 12 minutes in the game, you can see how much pressure is being put there on that crucial buff here for Onik Esports. Mm -hmm, for sure. And I think, let's keep in mind, let's have a look at the replay one more time for that fight. Because even though Onik looked like they had the initial upper hand, it turned around so quickly once Momo got into the fight. Very key. Watch where Chico Guys is and how many heroes from Onik he had on him before he eventually died. But do the math, folks. Do the math. One for three. Take that trade any day. Any day for sure. But Todak, with a 5.5k lead here, it's only going to be fruitful for a... Whoa! 
Yo, where the hell half of his life go? I mean, he is 5-2-2. Two, and two. He has high and dry. That's Correct. Cool. Right? <laughs> and, in, and yes, and then Rival was alone. So yes. it makes sense. But like, Rival's got like 10k on <laughs> Kyrie, who's like 3k down. And He's you also know two what? levels ahead of him. Yeah, you're two levels ahead. <laughs> I would imagine you would do like a quarter at the very least. Could be the items. And again, I didn't see where, where Kyrie came from. He was come, going at full speed. <laughs> but could also be a factor as to how much damage he was dealing. Oh, yeah. boy. All right. And well, these links, they don't build any defense items at all. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. That is a good Just point. Pop him. Glass cannon. Well, let's see whether the glass cannon is going to be enough for this interaction. Yet again, purple buff going to be choked out here. On a keyboard, still fighting for it, but it's going to ultimately be taken away. Momo and Yumsky doing exactly what we painted the picture here. Yeah. Keyboy, though, waiting patiently. Because now that the Lord is up, this could be a crucial pickoff oh. if oh. Keyboy can find it. As oh. he waits patiently in that bush for now, but... Todak not even going to enter that area. Oh my goodness, is somebody going to check it? Oh. Oh. Ah! Can he get hit? Rival's going to be a oh. double. Get what? the Tempest blades out. And now Keyboy's going to be the one punished You're here. Kidding. What a play coming out from Rival. You're kidding. That didn't one-shot him. What's going on? He had everything, even Magic Worship. He played it perfectly. At this point, Keyboy hasn't really farmed up, couldn't stay in the lane, get the XP, get the gold that he needed. He just could not. And you're looking at Rival who's at level 15, level 14, Keyboy's at 11. Just the base stat growth just made the difference. It really did. And I mean, right now at the 42k mark, they are clearly at an item power spike against Onik, who's at 37. They just need a little bit more time to catch up. But with this Luminous Lord, I don't know. We're expecting to see at least another inhibitor turn or at the very least a 5v5 fight. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, as this Lord marches down the bottom side, Onik Esports is still, even with this defense, they're going to have their work cut out for them because what you're seeing is just engage after engage. And Keyboy, I mean, look how tanky Yusuke is. He's going to get dragged with the Stampede here behind enemy lines, but should be able to bob and weave out of there. They oh. do lose that mid turret, though. They're not even going to wait for the Lord here as Todak is into the base of Onik Esports. Lord has made its way to the base. They lose that mid lane. And now they're going to lose more resources here, but Momo doing exactly what he needs to do. Kyrie trying to poke down anybody that he can. Lord should go down shortly. They might look to end it here. It's still hitting the base. Tempest of Blade's going to be popped. Yumski, though, quite low. And for now, Onik Esports able to hold on. World class defense coming up from Onik Esports. Incredible. Oh, run, moon, run. And what a clap back. Three for two, and Onik is still breathing. So exactly how did that happen? All right, first up, I think Boots got a solid taunt and put down the members of Todak to a very acceptable level for Kyrie to clean up. Plus the pulls from Sans, who actually is doing great. I'd like to see what Sans is building here. Again, the replay coming up in just a couple seconds here. They were underneath the crystal, so best believe there was a lot of free turret hits, right? So here, look, watch Boots, watch Boots. Oh, they got our Princess Wrath. You're right. You're right. They have Princess Wrath really making the difference, chunking out a lot of the members. But even prior to this, the fact that they were pulling the Lord's attention to minimize its damage on the crystal, that making was key. all the difference. That was key. Oh, they're still going to be going for it. It's CW, though, that falls here to Yumski. Now Rival on the hunt for Sans. Can he grab the kill? Gets the Cold Altar down. Tempest Blade is going to be popped here. And it's Chiku, guys. Taking out Kyrie. Going to flicker in and gets Keyboy as well. Todak is looking to end the game here in a huge match for Onik e Onic Esports. They're and now it. they're going to wait for that wave to come in. Weirwood Manipulation going to come down. Boots trying to do his best to stall out. But now the wave is going to be charging in. Todak looking to end the game. Rival focusing on the crystal, and that's it. Todak takes the game against Onik Esports. Now we have it. Todak winning both their matches here, and they've even taken down Onik. But don't worry, nobody's going home. This is only the first taste of M4. Congratulations to Todak. The one way that they could have done it, they did. They langard on through. Minute zero. They gave Kyrie hell. Minute zero. They took down Kyrie. They took down first blood. And by God, if I'm getting this correctly, we broke. We broke a record today. We hit 1 million viewers. We hit 1 million viewers. You guys at home made this possible. Thank you for watching this beautiful game of Mobile Legends between two fantastic teams.
Oh boy, there's still plenty more to go, but this is only just day number one. Yeah, and